Hello friends, welcome to our channel Study Quill. I'm very much excited about this video. This is going to be the first one. So today we are going to start with the sets. That is lesson number one in our class 11th Mathematics. We'll be having a quick revision of certain terms because I know that you must have done them already. So let us begin with it. First of all, what do we mean by a set? A set can be defined as a, it, can, it is basically a well-defined collection of objects. It could be anything. Suppose a set of natural numbers, a set of whole numbers. You can even decide the limits. Like a set of uh, natural numbers between 1 and 4. So like this, that is a set. Basically, it is a well-defined collection of objects as it is written over here also. Second thing is, what do we mean by the members or elements of a set? Then the numbers or the objects which comprise a set, which are a part of a set, these are known as the members or elements. Like I have given an example over here. Suppose a set is there, that is we consider A to be a set. Then A is, uh, you know, it is comprising of 1, 2, 3 and 4. Then these elements, these are known as the elements or the members of this set. That is 1, 2, 3 and 4. These are the elements or members of this set. Okay. Now the third concept is a representation. Like how do we represent them? So what do we do in representation is we can represent them in three particular ways. The first one is simply by words, by stating. Like I say, suppose I say the set of natural numbers from 1 to 4. Then this is, I am representing them in form of words. So when I write them in words, then it is in words you can represent. Second is in the roster form that is also known as a tabular form. In this we represent it with the help of curly braces and the elements which are there or the members, they are separated with the help of certain commas. This is a tabular or the roster method. A is equal to, which is a set of 1, 2, 3 and 4. This is a tabular or the roster form. Third representation is a set builder notation. In the set builder notation, we represent it. It is a combination, you can say it is a combination of the roster one and the words. So you represent it like this. If I have to write that is a set of natural numbers from 1 to 4, then I can write it like this. I can put a, a you know curly brace over here. I can write x. x we consider to be an element and that is basically that could be 1, 2, 3, 4, anything. So x such that we write x such that x belongs to natural number and x is lying between 1 and 4. Suppose this is there. And we end it with the help of a curly bracket again. So this is basically the set builder notation. This is the set builder notation that we have. x and here you can put this is such that. You can put a semicolon also or a colon also over here. Then after this we have the types of sets. So by the names only, we, this is going to be very easy. By the names only we can see, first one is a finite set or an infinite set. Finite we know when they are countable, you know, when you can count the limit, then that is a finite set. Infinite set when you cannot count. Like, suppose, a set of natural numbers less than 50, that is a finite set. But a set of natural numbers, we don't know the limit, neither the upper limit nor the lower limit, then that is an infinite set. Second one is an empty set by the name itself. It is also known as a null set which has got no elements in it. Representation of an empty set is important because we, uh, you know, at times we do this mistake. So like in, whether it, when it is an empty set then we represent it by simply by putting these uh, curly braces with no element over here or you can represent it with a, the, this is a phi sign or something like that. This is how you represent it. Okay, then we have a singleton set. Singleton set by the name itself, it consists of one element, single, one element. Then you have equal and equivalent set. Equal sets are there when they have got the equal number of elements also and the same elements are there. Then they are equal sets. And equivalent sets when the number of elements are same not and it is not important that they are equal. That means... It is not important that the sets will have the same elements, but the number of elements will be the same. I can give an example here. Equal sets, we have 1, 2, 3, 4 and 4, 3, 2 and 1. These are both equal sets. 
But if I say 1, 2, 3, 4, this one only, and A, B, C, and D, then these both are equivalent sets because they have got the same number of elements in them. And the last one that we have is the overlapping set or disjoint set. Overlapping set is there when they have got anything, you know, it can be any one element also when they have in common. Then it is an overlapping set and disjoint set is there when they have got no elements in common. So disjoint, that means there is nothing in common between them, then they are disjoint sets. When they have got at least one element in common or it can be any, you know, like more than one also, then these are overlapping sets. So we end up till here. In the next video, we will be dealing with the how to solve questions on them and how to solve the problems related to uh, we will be having like related to the set uh, notations also we will be seeing and also we will see that how do we deal with the problems related to them. So till then take care. Bye bye.